House of Commons returns tomorrow after a brief break and now there are just four weeks left in the current parliamentary sitting a critical month you could say it's been nine months since Pierre Polyev became leader of the Conservatives and the acrimony between him and the Prime Minister has only amplified in the time since. A new survey from Angus Reid shows after eight years in office, 40% of Canadians approve of the Prime Minister, while more than half do not. So what do the parties need to do in the next month once they return? Our Sunday strategy session is here to talk about that. Kathleen Monk is a former NDP strategist and director of communications to the late Jack Layton. Corey Tonight was Ontario Premier Doug Ford's campaign manager and former director of communications for Prime Minister Stephen Harper. And Scott Reed is a CTV News political analyst and former communications director to Prime Minister Paul Martin. Hey everyone, hey there. great hey. to see you. Uh, Corey, we're heading into the final stretch. Parliamentarians will be back here on Monday for the last month before they head off into the barbecue circuit. What is the, what are the things they should uh, be talking about and shouldn't be talking about as they kind of best, try to best position themselves for that barbecue circuit? Yeah, well, I think it should be a battle of economic narratives over the summer. I think the lead up into it is still going to be heavily dominated by uh, China election interference mm -hmm. because I, I think they just can't help themselves in terms of the parties to, to have a fight on that. But uh, I, I think th uh, there has to be a, a, a pivot at some point towards the issues that are more central to what voters are saying they want to be talking about and what they're concerned about. Uh, I think there's there's still lots of pressure uh, in in the general public, not as much uh, visible in Parliament today, uh, around cost of living issues, around yeah. interest rates, around those sorts of you know meat and potato economic uh, uh, issues, and I think you're going to hear a lot of that if you're out on on the barbecue circuit in the summer. And I think it's really essential to winning the next election. The, you know, the party that has the the more trusted economic er narrative is often the winner, and especially if it's in times where the economy is a little bit shaky. Yeah, Scott, it's so interesting because I was thinking back to this time last year, and we were heading into basically the worst month of inflation. And yes, the inflation isn't as bad, but prices are still substantially going up each month, and it feels as expensive right now, if not more expensive than it did a year ago. What does that mean for what politicians can expect to face in the coming months? Well, it means that Pierre Polyev is still going to keep talking about it like it is right now, and it isn't getting better, and it ain't going to get better as long as Justin Trudeau's prime minister. I think his narrative and his challenge is really simple. He does that. Maybe pick a second, let them focus on foreign interference in China, you know, keep the leader focused on the bread and butter issues. But I think the really interesting test is for the government. And, and I think there's a couple things. First of all, I wouldn't waste any time in getting out of Ottawa. Yeah, there's five weeks left, but boy, oh boy, I get the prime minister on the road. I get them out of Ottawa and out of Ottawa think. And two things in particular. One, I find a fight. You're the prime minister of the country. You've been on your back foot for months. Find a fight that makes you admirable, that positions you with the overwhelming majority of public opinion on the issues you care about and with the voters you care about. I'd be looking to find a fight if I was a prime minister and I would find someone else just like I said for Pierre Polyev, to do all the talking on foreign interference in China. He looked so angry in that news conference the other day. Don't repeat it. Kathleen, uh, on the point around the Prime Minister and the government, basically Scott's saying go on the offense, don't remain on the defense. Do you think that's a good strategy heading of in? Of course it is. And listen, the government cannot wait for summer break because there's a rule that when the House is sitting, it's advantage opposition, right? Because the, when the House is sitting and they have QP every day, they've got more media attention, they have the, the ability to put the government on its back heels. But once summer break happens and they're all in their constituencies, generally it's, it's the government that will get more of the headlines. So they are dying to get out of Ottawa. And I agree with Scott that, that the, the government should start actually summer early, start doing those town halls, getting out there, being proactive. But the key thing, if I was giving advice to them, is stop being so out of touch. I think when it comes to the affordability crisis, it's not enough to say, hey, it's better here in Canada than it is in Europe. You're okay. Because if you're feeling the pinch, if you're feeling the pinch of an affordability crisis, it doesn't matter if the hole that Europeans are in is worse. You're feeling a, a, the dark bottom of that hole and you want to get out of it, that affordability crunch. And I think for the consumer, Conservatives, they have another thing to do. They have to stop being so angry. You know, that's really what it is. They have to stop being so angry and start figuring out how they can start talking to women. If they want to grow their voter universe, they're going to have to start talking and appealing to women across this country. And for De New Democrats, I think 
generally what they have to do is, is, is stay steady, right? They have the opportunity to actually pick up disaffected liberals. They have the opportunity to pick up disaffected conservatives. But they just have to keep on working and not get distracted by the circus. Uh, let me ask you about the, the point that both Scott and Kathleen made, Corey, around sort of the, the quote unquote angry level or right. whether you know there needs to be a concentrated effort to reach out to more women. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think on the part of the leader, yes. I think you know this is why you have sort of surrogates who who play more attack roles. Uh, for instance, uh, Pierre Pauly have played that role for for Stephen Harper mm -hmm. with great effect, I think. But one of the things I, I would also say that summer is a really good opportunity to do, though, is to rebalance your team a little bit. And I, you've got to be thinking that mm -hmm. the Liberal government is I looking at ask, having yeah. <laughs> a cabinet shuffle at some point, and the summer is a good time to do that because it gives people some time to get more comfortable in their positions before they, they go into the fall session. But it's really probably the last good opportunity for them to do a big rebalancing of the team uh, prior to the final push to, to an election. And, uh, and, and insofar as that goes, I think you want to you know, move some people who have been stumbling out of positions where they've been stumbling in and get your strongest communicators in the roles where you're really going to need them. And I would, I would have to, yeah. I would have to <laughs> say finance has got to be one of those areas where if you want to win an economic narrative, uh, you need to, to have a very strong communicator in that role. Uh, well, I think uh, uh, Minister Freeland has you know, a lot of things that she's uh, you know, very capable of. I don't think comms uh, would be uh, the highest on the list. Uh, but you know, whatever the choices they make on that, you know, you're kind of setting up a team for the next election and the next and the lead into the next election campaign. And this cabinet, Scott, has been in place for a fairly long time compared to previous iterations. Is it is it time to shuffle the deck? Do you think? And and is that shuffling really the the priming of the uh, of the ground for the election? Yeah, I do think that is likely, and I think it's probably wise. And listen, you know, this this talk is not you know limited to our discussion. It's uh, over beers and whispers. It's being uh, said constantly in Ottawa. So, uh, I do think you know, look for a cabinet shuffle, possibly a prorogation, a speech from the throne. Try to reboot themselves. The only thing I would underscore is that those things don't give you necessarily an agenda. They don't give you a raise on debt. You should find it now. Don't wait until August and do a shuffle and a throne speech and then say, well, that's going to be our, our reboot. Like, start now. And I go back to it. One, there should be someone designated to be the big basher on Pierre Polyev. You know, talk about trying to make him less angry. If I was the Liberals, I'd be trying to make him more angry. And hey, mm -hmm. he's just like, water wants to be wet on this issue. So I would go hard. And I would have the Prime Minister trying to find a fight that puts him on the right side of public opinion. And I would do that now. Let me close the circle because if they are in the summer going to be talking about, let's say you come out and, and yes, there are the issues you're on the offense about, but ultimately cost of living is dominating, mm -hmm. right? And you spoke about, Kathleen, the government uh, being, some people perceiving them to be out of touch. And I think ultimately the, the, the start of the cost of living crisis was exacerbated politically for them because of that, right? right. They took a while to, I, to not say, hey, it's bad everywhere, right? They finally did start changing their tune, but it did take a while. Are they still going to be kind of on the defense when it comes to the cost of living issue, regardless of the fact in January, uh, July, they can say, look at the grocery rebate and, right. and things no, like but, that. But listen, when there's bad economic news, it's always bad for the government. It's always good for the opposition. So they're always going to be on their back heels. And, and frankly, they're going to have to come up with some policies for next September that really people can relate to and can kind of ease some of their pain. And I think that's going to have to focus on housing. It's going to have to focus on housing because housing is the real crunch that people are facing. When they can't pay off their, their mortgage, they can't, you know, they're de potentially defaulting on mortgages. We're seeing some of the highest debt rates in the you G7. The highest, the highest. The, the highest in the G7. Yeah. So, I mean, that is it's got to be addressed and they've got to move faster on housing. Okay, I have to leave it there. I appreciate the discussion as always today. Kathleen Monk, Corey Tonight, and Scott Reed. Thanks, guys. Thanks.